get straight to today's action with our first guest, Canaccord Genuity Chief Market Strategist Tony Dwyer. Tony, good afternoon. So um, mm -hmm. your, your take overall, what's happening in these markets? And you say to add on a pullback, which suggests maybe don't add now. Yeah, we we have been in that case for a little while now. This, John, this is kind of an interesting time. It's very rarefied overbought territory. So we use a weekly stochastic for the S&P 500, which is a technical oscillator. For only the seventh time in history, it's above an extreme overbought of 90. I know I'm talking technical here and I'm a macro guy, but it's, it's only the seventh time it's been over 90 for 18 consecutive weeks. It looks like you know, unless there's a major hit this week, it'll be 19. It's only done that twice before. So it's just an, an extreme overbought. It doesn't stay there forever. But I also can't find any data that says we should really plunge. Just kind of a pullback to get rid of some of the excesses and to really generate that next leg higher. Okay, and you also say to expect some further broadening of the market once we work through some of these overbought extremes and progress through the second half. But, you know, when we pull back these days, just the Russell often is getting killed. Like, it's down yeah. almost 2% today. Th does that mean once we do get some real further pullbacks, though, you would emphasize uh, mid caps and small caps? I do. It's, it's much more of a generational call or a long-term call for us, John, than a trading call. So over the last couple of years, I've done a pretty good job of, of renting stocks when they get oversold enough and then feeding into it as they rallied because higher interest rate, rates and, and weaker earnings distribution has really negatively impacted the average stock or the small cap stock. So what makes for a rental versus an, an ownership on weakness? And it comes down to two things. You have to have interest rates go in your favor. I still believe when the Fed says they're going to cut, I believe they will. If you have a weak employment number, remember the re negative revision we had in the last payroll employment report wiped away a lot of that feeling that, wow, they may not even cut at all. So you need lower interest rates and you also need a broader distribution. I think people would be surprised that last year, if you take out the MAG-7, according to uh, my earnings wizard at LSEG IBIS, TJ Dillon, earnings would have been negative outside of the, if you take out the MAG-7 growth out of earnings for calendar year 2023. And in this quarter, it's the same thing. You get a broader distribution of earnings as we go into the fourth quarter of this year and then into next year. So that's why lower interest rates and a broader distribution of earnings growth and participation is really what drives wanting to own stocks on weakness versus renting stocks on weakness. But, but what if the Fed doesn't cut or doesn't cut as much as the dot plot currently suggests? And I asked that on a day where Roger Ferguson, former Fed official, came on CNBC earlier and floated the possibility that that could, in fact, happen. Maybe it's still a minority view. Maybe it's still not a strong likelihood. But he is also seen to be somewhat of a Fed whisperer in his own right, too. So, so what happens then for the market? What's positioned for that possibility here? Morgan, I really think we got to, you know, they say they're data dependent. The problem is it's very incomplete data. And I've gone through a couple of times how um, the survey rate when you get the payroll data is so flawed because it's very incomplete. But ultimately, remember that the Fed only expected in, in 2022, in the beginning of 2022, there was only going to be three rate hikes for the cycle. Mm -hmm. So the Fed can change, you know, they're just as, as good as me at being wrong. They, and they will change with the data. And I think that data... Listen, we've had a manufacturing recession for the last 18 months. So having an ISM on an inventory replenishment, that may soften the blow if you have a services slowdown with employment weakness. That, that really, it, it hasn't happened. I thought it would have happened by now. But if you look at the NFIB hiring plans index at a cycle worst, the ISM employment is bumping along at cycle worst. The conference board um, leading employment index is right around its cycle worst. So where I'll be wrong is if it is a, a no landing. It, I don't know how you can do that without gas. But if you do have a no landing, and rates don't go down.